everybody. Thank you for tuning into the channel. You're watching MG Meaningful Garage. My name is Patrick. So I'm super, super excited to finally get this channel going. It's been a long time going. I mean, oh, I've been wanting to start this channel for a while, but unfortunately things happen in life and uh, things get pushed back. But um, I'm super happy that I'm here now so I can start sharing stuff with you guys. Um, basically, Meaningful Garage is basically my personal garage that I'm going to be uh, showing you guys the good content about all the builds that I'm going to be doing, my personal cars, um, different car shows that I normally go to. Um, just show you little bits and pieces of what goes on throughout my life fixing these cars or, um, you know, helping guys out if they need a little bit of motivation if they're doing a project and um, they need a little push by just watching the video and motivating themselves. Um, for the people that's out there with the same cars that I have, um, showing you guys exactly where I get the stuff from, how I'm fixing it, um, trials and tribulations that I go through. So you can find the easy route after I go through the hard route and make all the mistakes and everything like that. So you guys don't have to go through that. But um, I'm not a professional mechanic. I am not a professional painter or anything like that. But I'm a professional car guy, just like I know you professional car, car girls and car guys out there are. Um, we just love cars. We have a passion for cars. Um, my profession, I'm a professional um, healthcare worker. I'm an MRI technologist. I've been for many years now. Um, my full-time job is an MRI technologist. Um, and I'm a full-time dad. I have three beautiful kids. I have a five-year-old boy a two-year-old girl and a newborn. Well, she's not a newborn, but she's about five months right now. So I have three beautiful kids and a, a beautiful girl. Um, basically, they're my centerpiece, man. Family is always the ones that's there for you and keep you moving forward. But through this channel, I hope to build a family with you guys, um, to bond with you guys through these videos, to show you all the trials and tribulations I go through with these cars. So maybe I can help somebody that's out there with a long time project or somebody that has a similar car with me. Um, we can ask questions, bump questions off each other and um, just build on it, man. So I'm here, like I said, to give good content. I'm not here to steal time. I'm here to show you guys what I'm going through with these cars um, daily, you know, daily life through this garage and get it cracking, man. So I'm like I said, I'm really excited. I'm not going to just bore you with everything and, you know, just keep going on with blabbing, blabbing, blabbing. I'm just going to show you exactly what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to give you a little tour about my, uh, around my garage here. All right, so before I start showing you guys the cars, I do want to show you guys the garage. Um, I bought this house uh, roughly about five years ago. Um, the reason why I bought the house is just straight up. I'm going to tell you straight up. It was for the garage. Um, I was talking to my realtor. I told her that I was looking for a house with property where I can actually build um, a detached garage where I'm going to have like a workshop. And we looked at several houses and this house actually wasn't on a market. It was on like a commercial um, listing, but then the owner took it off. But I found this property because of the garage and I remember telling my girl I was like you know what we have to go see this house because she sent me pictures and she said oh yeah you wouldn't you like to live in in this garage as a house we can get put a bathroom in the back and long story short we didn't know a house was attached to the garage so after a half a day she texts me again she goes you know what there's actually a house that's connected to this garage and I said, no way. So I said, how much is it? So it was in our price range. And I said, why didn't we see this before? And I asked her, why didn't we see this before? And she basically was like, it's not listed, but the garage was listed like on a commercial um, property. So I said, you know what? We got to go see this. I, I mean, just looking at the garage from the pictures, I knew it was like a mega garage. So I was like, that's exactly what I want for my dream garage without you know, going through the construction and finding a contractor to build me one. Cause I was just looking for a property where I could actually build one. So we went over this long story short, we saw about six houses that day and my real estate agent was wrapping it up. She said, okay guys, so we saw six houses. Just let me know what you think about the six houses and um, see if you want to put an um, offer into one of them. And I looked at her, looked at my girl and I'm like, 
what's going on with the other house. And she goes, just relax. I'll talk to her. She goes, oh, no. Um, I don't want to say her name of the real estate agent. So she said, oh, um, no, they didn't get back to me. So we're going to wait for them to email us back before we go see the house because their realtor is dragging their feet. And I looked at my girl and I'm like, yeah, dragging the feet. I want to see that house today. That's the only reason why I saw the other six houses because I wanted, I thought that she was saving the best house for last because I told her I wanted to see the big garage. So anyway, we actually called the homeowners and they just said, come on over. If you want to see the house, come on over. Uh, forget about waiting for my realtor. He's been dragging his feet through the mud. So come right over and we can, um, you know, you can see the house. When I'm telling you guys, you know that aura that they say you see around when Michael Jackson was alive or Prince was alive or Elvis Presley, when you saw him walking down the street or you saw him at a show, you see that aura, that glow around him. That's what I saw around that garage, man. So when I pulled up that driveway, I said, this is it. I don't even have to go inside the house. Where do I sign? Because of course, this was my first time buying a house, but I didn't know how it worked. But all I know, I just wanted to pen and a paper and just sign over whatever I had to do to get this house. So anyway, we ended up talking to the uh, owner. Um, guy was really cool, man. He was a car collector himself. He had a bunch of Jaguars and old, I mean, old school Jaguars and uh, classic cars and Mercedes and everything like that. So he gave me a tour around the garage and I mean, I fell in love, man. And he did it right. He built it strong. But you know, some things I definitely saw I wanted to change and I'm about to show you guys because it's still basically in semi in the same state that I bought the house because I really didn't have too much um money to put into the garage we were just trying to renovate the house basically so um yeah we ended up buying the house and I, I swear it was like a dream come true man having a shop this big in your in my property around this area it was it was crazy so I'm just gonna show you guys a little bit about you know what I want to do to the garage and everything like that um in future videos so let me just flip you guys around for the third, for the the first thing I want to do, I I want to change the roof. This is like wood paneling. I mean, it's functional, but it doesn't look good. I mean, it looks just like a. I mean, I think a warehouse roof would look better, even when it's just open. So I don't like these wood panels. I want them to match the walls. I want them to be white. Um, the one thing I did do so far in this in this garage, I only had. In this big garage, I only had about three working lights. So, and they weren't the LEDs that you see right now. They were the old school ones with the bulbs in there. So it was only three lights that worked in this whole shop. And it was two on the far corner and one over here. So you could imagine this at nighttime. It was horrible. I couldn't, once I dropped something on the floor, I had to wait for the morning to find it basically, unless I had a flashlight with me. So I ordered these LED lights. Um, as you can see, I put uh, three, six, eight on each side. So I put eight on each side. I rewired everything myself. And I mean, this, this garage just lit up, man. So that's the main thing I did to this garage so far. Just put light in there because I needed to work on these cars, man, in the light. So... I basically do want to renovate this garage. I want to redo the seams because if you look at the seams on a lot of this, uh, the drywall here, you can see it bubbling up here and they're cracking. I had a contractor came in and did the light in the back of the garage. Sloppy work. You know, he just left the hole there. Like stuff like that, man. I just want to fix this up. If I go over here, you can see how it's coming up. You see how the drywall is cracking and everything like that. So I basically want to, I don't want to tear the walls down, but I want to sand everything down. I want to re-tape um, these joints. And I want to do the sheetrock on the ceiling too. So I want to get the sheetrock around the ceiling. I want to seal these corners up a little better. You can see in the corners where they had the wood trim. I want to get some nice trim, but I want to seal it so there's no... Bugs, I get a lot of bugs in here. I don't want bugs and spiders. I mean, I know it happens, but not like all the time. Even underneath the door, when it's really windy, dirt and everything just blows underneath the door. So I want to get that real, real, um, sealed up again. 
So basically, ripped the, uh, the, the ceiling off, the, the wood paneling, uh, retape all the joints, and paint the whole garage. I want to do a whole new paint job. Yeah, so this is, this, is a, this is what I was telling you guys. So I had about three of these lights. I didn't change this two in the back. I ran out of lights. I thought I was going to have enough. So I had three of these guys working. So two on this side and one on the far side. So I still have two I have to change out. One in the back here and one in the back here. So I'll do that after I get the um, ceiling done. So yeah, that's what I want to change in the garage itself. I want to do all the um, paint the garage. Like I said, do the walls, do the ceiling. And then after I do all that, then I want to hit these floors. I want to do something with the floor. I know it looks like a, a workshop and it looks good and all that stuff. And you shouldn't worry about it because this is a car garage that I work in. I, I don't just use it for showing and all that stuff. But I want it to look good, man. So I plan on getting the, uh, the floors done and getting some lifts in here. I want to get like a, at least... A four post lift over here, a four post lift in the corner over here, and I'm thinking about putting a two post lift in the in the middle here. So I want a total of three lifts so I can actually have, if I want to, six cars in the back here and have this whole front open where I can actually work on one car um, or just have a couch here where the TV's at and everything like that. So yeah, so let me just give you a little tour around the garage. So I have a lot of junk still in here. I have my saws, uh, my miter saw, my table saw, my, my sprayer, uh, bumper that needs to be on my ram right now, but still. Um, just a lot of junk in here. So um, in a few more weeks, I am having a shed built um, so I can get a lot of this stuff out of here and then just this garage be strictly for my cars. Um, Dion, my son, he already took over my garage with his quad. He has his power wheels over here. Looks like, like I said, this is my personal garage. All right, so when I moved into this house, I literally had about 10 to 15 water buckets full of tools. I didn't have any toolbox. I mean, you know what? I'm lying. I did have one toolbox. It probably fit about four hammers and a couple screwdrivers. But moving into this house in a nice garage, I said, you know what, it's time to get a little professional. Let me just get some nice professional grade toolboxes. So these are my uh, Husky toolboxes that I have over here. I will be doing more reviews on this and, you know, talking a little bit more about it in the next video. Um, but uh, basically, they, they've been great. So this is all my tool section in this corner over here. Okay, and we're going to move on to our... See, right over here. Well, this is my son's section. He already took over my garage. His digger and his uh, dirt bike that we recently got him for Christmas. All right. Let's see. All right, so um, over here, this is my 1987 S4 Mazda RX-7 Turbo 2. Um, motor was pulled. I'm currently doing some work on here. See, this is the reason why I started thinking you know what let me just start vlogging and make a channel because there's a lot of people out there that's going through the same thing that I'm going through right now with the builds um, doing it step by step so I just want to be able to show people and give people good content so they can either take a little bit from me and finish their project or give me advice but my main thing is I wanted to start vlogging and get all this captured on film so if there's somebody out there, you know, struggling a little bit or needs some type of path or guideway, um, they can look at my video and get some good content and help them move forward. See, that's how I learned. Looking at different YouTubers, you know, getting images and uh, certain things from different people. All right, so over here, this is my S5 Mazda RX-7 1990, and it's the convertible. Me, personally, I love convertibles. I just love convertibles. I know a lot of people say verts for skirts, but when there's those 90, 80 degree, well, not 90, 70, mid 70, 80 degree days when you wanna have the windows rolled all the way down, me, I drop the top, I love it. I just love that feeling. All right, so I know y'all probably already saw it, but we're gonna wait for on that one. So right over here, this is my 
1995 GST, because I'm a big DSM guy. Um, this is my convertible. I recently bought this about two years ago. Um, it was with a blown motor. The body's in good shape. I, there's a lot of things I still have to do with this. Um, I bought this car because it's a convertible, but I wanted to be able to bring my family along with me, you know, when I'm going out on those nice days. Now, just to point it out, guys, I did not do that to the bumper. I bought it like that. So please don't think I'm like one of those drivers that can't drive and hitting curbs and all that stuff, but that's not me. But we are gonna replace the bumper. We're gonna do a, a new paint job or, or blend the same paint job, um, clean the car up, do some interior clean up and get this thing run 100%. All right, guys. So I'll show you because I know you guys were like, go back to the red one. So this is my 1995 FD Mazar 7 right-hand drive Infiniti. Um, I had this car imported in. Um, interior is immaculate. Um, the the thing is, I want to get this bad boy up and running for Seven's Day this year. Believe it or not, Seven's Day falls on my birthday. So, yeah. So, that's something that we're going to have to talk about in the, you know, the next uh, video. But, yeah, we want to get this bad boy running so I can go to my first Seven Day um, up in uh, New York. Yep. Doing All right, so... Um, basically, this is my four bolt rear that we're going to be installing in the Talon. Um, this is one of the first cars I'm going to be working on leading up to this spring in, on, this, on this channel because uh, we're getting this car loaded up. It's heading to Connecticut. Um, we're going to bring it up to Connecticut. I have an engine builder up in Connecticut. Uh, Rafe at RRT, he's a really good, really good mechanic and he knows these cars inside out. He's going to get this boy uh, buttoned up a little bit so we can get this back into running form. But um, I'll just give you a little preview of what it looks like inside. All right, so let's pop the hood a little bit here. Okay. All right, so, so this is it, this is the monster. Um, it got a precision uh, 6466 turbo. Um, I'll do a review on this to tell you all the knickknacks and all that that we have in this car. But yeah, this is going to get dropped off. This is going to get buttoned up so we can get this bad boy back on the track and we can start ripping it. I do have a pair of slicks. I had the hoosers that I use. Um, these are just rims that I recently bought. Brand new tires. Didn't even get to drive it. This is dirt from just rolling back and forth in the garage. So once I get my coilovers on and I just lower it a little bit, these rims will look pretty tough. And then we're gonna get this car resprayed so it can be that Night Rider black. And yeah, so um, snow blowers. All right guys, so thank you for tuning into the channel. Again, you're watching MG Meaningful Garage. We're gonna have a lot of projects coming at you. Uh, super excited to get this channel finally up and going. Um, we're going to get you some good content. Uh, hit that like button, man. Hit that like button. Um, subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification button if you want to see and be aware of all the new content, what's going on with the projects, uh, the three RX-7s or the two DSMs. Of course, I have a Bel Air, too. I already told you guys I have the Bel Air that we're going to be working on. And also, garage renovations. I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff in this garage. Um, if you guys are building a garage or if you guys are... Um, in the process of renovating the garage um, This is a channel you're gonna watch man because uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of stuff and uh, with lights uh, Different lifts floors paint so we can get this thing cracking and so we can help each other. So again stay safe uh, Love God love yourself and let's do this thing, baby